Hey guys, it's Justine from the NCLEXTutor.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about the next gen NCLEX because I've been talking to students on the phone about this test because we tutor students and they're asking a lot of questions about this test and there's definitely some misinformation going around. So I wrote a blog post just with the most and most important stuff that you should definitely know about the test. And we're going to go over that today. Okay, so here we are at the website. I'm just gonna go over to the blog and then click on this article, Next Gen NCLEX. Important stuff to know for taking the NCLEX nursing exam, the new one. So it's basically just a bullet pointed list of stuff to know. And uh, April 1st is when the new NCLEX is going to be coming out. And the basics are this. Know that the new NCLEX exam is composed of the current test item types and then the new test item types. So it's not like the entire test is this new type of test. And the new types of test questions are called NGN items. The test is going to be between 85 and 150 questions, and there's gonna be 15 pilot questions that don't count towards your score in the first 85 questions. And that's always been the same about those 15 pilot questions. You still have five hours to complete the test, and that does include any time for your breaks. And then, like I just said, if you're taking it after April 1st or after, then it's going to be the new NCLEX. So uh, there's two uh, types of uh, NGN items, okay? So there's the unfolding case study. So that's when you have one client, but then it unfolds for six different questions. And then there's the standalone item where it looks a little bit more complicated, where they'll give you a tab to read it, like the nurse's notes and lab values or something like that. But it's just one client and it's just one question. And it's basically, both of these types of questions are a clinical scenario and it includes part of the medical record. There will definitely be three unfolding case studies, okay, on your test. And so that will be a total of 18 questions. And then there's about 10% of the test is the standalone item. So that would be anywhere between seven and 14 of these standalones. And then the rest of the questions are just your traditional types of questions where there's just one answer for a multiple choice question or your traditional select all that apply, the alternate format question, which is like the drag and drop or pick the hotspot or put in the uh, amount of medication that you're going to give like a math problem. And then less than 5% of the test is the alternate format question types of questions. So I wouldn't really worry about those. Um, there's gonna be partial credit for any of the select all that apply um, and the NGN items, although not all of the NGN items are partial credit. Okay, there's, a, there's a, a couple different types of questions that are not, which I'll go over that in a separate uh, video where I talk about how they score the different types of questions. And then they're gonna provide you the normal lab values. So that's really good for, um, so you don't have to memorize the values, you just have to interpret what do they mean. So basically when I look at the numbers of like, well, how much of the test is actually the new test? So it's about 25% of the test will be the new case studies and the new standalone items. So they have this passing standard where they look at okay, well, how hard are these questions? And they're actually not making the test harder, okay? So it's called logits anyway. It's kind of hard to understand, but it's been the same passing standard since 2014. So even though the questions are changing a little bit with the case studies and the standalones, it's not like they're making the test like way harder. It, it, and it's actually a really good change, I'll have to say. We've already been doing these uh, um, types of questions with our students and they really like it and I'll have to say I really like it too it is a great much better way let's say that it's a much better way of testing students of their nursing knowledge and the nursing content is the nursing content that you've already learned so it's not getting changed or anything like that it's the same type of content um, assuming you graduated recently or you're using an updated resource 
The distribution of content is changing a little bit. There's a little bit more emphasis on safety and infection control and a bit less emphasis on management of care, which is that ethical legal type of topics, but management of care is still the biggest topic on the test. And then uh, my students just need to know, you know, where should we go practice these questions? So I contacted UWorld. Um, they have 76 question case studies and they have 69 NGN standalones. And then uh, they probably have already added their case studies to their readiness exams. So they have a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they're even adding more. But it can be a little bit expensive, you world, but it is really good. And then Saunders NGN book has 35 six question case studies and then 74 NGN standalones. And that's a much cheaper option. It doesn't look like the real NCLEX, but it's still a good resource to use. I've always liked Saunders. Um, Kaplan, as of March 11th, didn't, they didn't have any NGN items yet. So today is, what's today? March 30th. So they probably have them up there, hopefully. And I'll update this blog post with um, resources and like how many questions um, people have. And then the Nursing Mastery app, they only have 12 six question case studies and 104 NGN style standalones. But I did notice there's a, there's a technical glitch with the case study. So they're not really working correctly. So I'm gonna get in contact with them and then um, I will definitely put this in here. If, um, if I don't think it was good to use, I would take it out, okay? But if it's in there, then I still think it's good to use. Um, if you wanna see an example of the new NCLEX exam, you should go here, NCSBN. Like they are the people that run the NCLEX and they have uh, an example exam. They don't have the answers, but at least you can see what it looks like and the different types of questions and how they might show up on a test. And how I wrote this blog post is I looked at the NCSBN and the NCLEX.com, which is owned by NCSBN, to get my resources. So everything, except for the uh, where to practice questions, I just called them or looked on Amazon. And that's basically it. So if um, I do come across some other information that I think is really important to know, I'm just gonna add it to this blog post and then I'll show that it's been updated. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you did find it helpful. And if you do like this video, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in tutoring or some of the other resources that we offer, you can go to my website, theNCLEXTutor.com. Thanks for watching, bye.